The houses have been bought by local people in the borough and also uh, the local areas of Cloughton and Birkenhead, etc. Many developments attract buyers from across the borough and we should be encouraging local movement for people to be able to both get their foot on the housing ladder and also move up the housing ladder. It is also important that we provide a housing choice and offer that an, an offer that can attract in migration to balance any out migration from the borough. In terms of local need and affordable housing, council have the have to undertake a strategic housing market assessment which sets out the broad needs and objectives for new housing, including the tenure and property types, including affordable homes. This provides an overarching bullet perspective and is one of many documents used as part of the planning framework. Other information on housing needs, such as the local housing register and demand for specific types of accommodation in areas are useful for proposed schemes and are highlighted in formal consultation <coughs> responses by officers as part of the planning process. Thanks, Chris. Councillor Kruby. Thanks, Jill. Uh, this question is for Councillor Angela Davis, since you've done all the Davis you see. Um, again, this is going to copy something that the lady previously did mention about the golf club. Um, my question is, Andrew Rouse, the director of the Klaus Joint Venture Group, who resigned on the 11th of June has also resigned from the branded hotel management. Mr. Roos uh, and another director, Gavin Davis, um, resigned on the 4th of June for BHM, who have now lost three of their five directors since January 2018. In a report to World Council's Cabinet in December 2017, it was stated that branded hotel management are a key partner of the Nicklaus Joint Venture Group and part of a strong team to develop the Hoy Lake Golf Resort project. The, cabinet, the report to Cabinet stated, Branded Hotel Management, a specialist hotel management company, also provide consultancy services in respect of hotel development. They will provide commercial hotel advice and lead on the negotiation and management of the Celtic Par Manor Partnership. So the question, my, my question is, how much concern does this create in respect of this ongoing controversial golf development project, which to date has garnered such a strong opposition from a very large portion of our residents. Yeah, thank you, Davis. Um, thank you for the advance notice of the, the question about the Hoy Lake Golf Resort. Um, the council is aware of the resignations. Um, people resign from directorships um, for a whole variety of reasons. And the company cited are continuing to perform their roles within the project. The council will continue to do its due diligence at all stages of the golf resort project. Councillor Leslie Rennie. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, can I ask a question, please, to the Leader of the Council? And can I um, point you, Councillor Davis, to page 42 of the agenda, and it's page 32 of the World Plan 2020 annual report. Um, my question is in relation to the paragraph, um, the penultimate left-hand side paragraph on that page where we are talking about the number of fixed penalty tickets that have been issued for people littering and also for the irresponsible dog owners. Um, I'm sure you're aware, uh, Councillor Davis, because I think you've been copied into a couple of emails that I have um, regarding particularly over the last couple of weekends with the good weather, uh, we've attracted an awful lot more extra people onto the green and open spaces and the beaches, particularly in my ward of Wallasey. Um, would you therefore agree with me then that the photographs which residents have sent in just shows the appalling mess of rural beaches left by, not by dogs, but by humans and the amount of litter clearly that the council is not picking up adequately or quickly enough so therefore, um, Councillor Davis, again, I hope you would agree with me that whilst we're tackling litter and irresponsible dog owners, we should not be actually getting to grips with those responsible dog owners who use our green spaces, our open parks, particularly the dips in Wallasey Village and also our beaches in the manner that is going on under the order which we've all come to know as the PSPO. 
I would hope, Mr. Mayor, that um, the leader of the council may think again and actually withdraw those proposals. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Rennie. Uh, we are in the middle of a consultation, and that consultation goes till the 15th of July. Um, I think we've demonstrated that we do listen to residents, and we've got a debate about another one of the uh, issues we've been consulting on um, later on. Um, so I think we need to let the consultation process uh, play out. We need to see what the outcome of that is. And yes, clearly I've had a number of representations, all of those rep representations from uh, members of the public, and I thank them for the trouble they've taken. We will take on board and we will listen uh, carefully to uh, before making a, a decision. I can give her that assurance. Um, and yes, of course, um, I, I join with her in condemning any irresponsible dog owners. And I also also condemn uh, people uh, littering this borough. Um, we have taken quite a hard line over the last uh, 18 months about littering, uh, and I make no apology for that. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do. But can I just but can I just say that um, I'd love to have more resources to uh, ca carry out better uh, services like littering. But, um, Councillor Rennie, you, you'll be aware that this government, uh, your government, have cut £250 million from our budget since 2010. That's nearly 40%. Um, across the country, the, the LGA, uh, and I was at the LGA conference last week listening to Tory Chair uh, Lord Porter uh, say that just to stand still, because of these cuts, the government will need to put eight billion, eight billion pounds more into local authorities' coffers by 2020. So, yes, uh, happy to join with you uh, on, on condemning irresponsible people uh, who litter and let their dogs fly in the borough. But let's not get away from the, the fact that this council resources have been decimated by this government, and what we need is a. Uh, an end to all of austerity and a government that really cares about funding public services properly. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Councillor Pat Cleary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two questions, please. Uh, first question to Cabinet Member for the Environment, Matthew Patrick. Uh, given that our recycling rate has fallen to below 36% and is a very long way adrift of the pledge to reach 50% by 2020, what are the new ways to make recycling easier, referred to on page 42, that will bridge such an enormous gap? Councillor Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this will be trying to find page 42, but I'll, I'll go off the top of my head and what um, Pat's asked me, what steps are we taking to improve the recycling rate um, across the, that's fine, I'll come back to it, across the border? Um, as Phil's just mentioned, we're in a really difficult time right now because of austerity that these Tories just will not stop inflicting upon the people of the world. Um, we are experimenting with um, trying a, a text message reminder system, we're trying to do some education in terms of helping people know what they can and cannot recycle. I'm meeting, I met with Carl Beer from the Merseyside Waste, uh, Waste and Recycling Authority to try and work out what ways that they're at the the back end of the, uh, of the waste side of things we can improve the recycling rates. So we do lots, but I've always said, and I think it's a, it's a line from Phil Davis, there's no monopoly on good ideas. And so if anyone ever has any thoughts as to how we can improve the recycling, I'd be all ears and happy to hear from anyone about that. Councillor Cleary. Uh, thank you. Yeah, second question to um, Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, Andrew Davis. Uh, what specific commitments have been given to the growth company partner about the amount of time it will take to process relevant planning applications. Mr. Davis. Um, I can get you a reply, which I'll, I'll send to you. Oh, Councillor Andrew Hodson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> similar to uh, Councillor Lenny, I'm asking a question to the Cabinet Member for Environment, Matthew. Uh, page 62 of the delivery plan states he will improve, sorry, he will, he will continue our zero tolerance approach to environmental crime, including dog crowding, as he's now heard first hand 
from the many owners who are generally upset and angry at his plans for a public spaces protection order, and also the 15,000 residents petition that was just put in. Um, will he take this opportunity to follow the example set by his leader and ditch the unpopular and unfair policy that punishes the many and not just the few? And would he like to comment on his leader's comments with lack of resources when they have a... Would you like to make a comment with regards to the 51 million loan, the 80 million, 80 million in uh, reserves and the wasted money to the world view? Surely you could use some of that money to help the dog situation. Yeah. <laughs> Um, try to sort of distinguish what the question was, particularly Councillor Hodgson. Um, will we ditch the plans to that are currently in consultation, asking the people of Wirral what they think about the plans? No, we're going to keep asking the people of Wirral what they think about the plans until the 15th of July, and then we'll be analysing those. I don't see how, on some of those aspects, when you talk about increasing the fine from dog farming from, from £50 to £100, you think that's unacceptable and, and disgusting. And, Actually, I think if there is, if there are issues like that, I think people need to be fined. I think if there are people walking away after their dog has fouled on, this, on any any part of the rule, I don't think that's acceptable. So I think there are certain, I think actually parts of the proposal have complete support from lots of people, and we've had some really interesting responses to the consultation. I've tried to try to do this completely fairly, ask everybody their views, including all councillors, held the open day, and everybody. I mean, Chris says he's completely opposed to it. It's the first I've heard of it. Chris, you are very welcome. You are very welcome. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, you are very welcome, um, Councillor Bateman, to email me at any point with your views on these things. And uh, Mr. Mayor, please, Mr. Mayor, yeah, please, I don't heckle you, uh, Councillor Bateman. You're very welcome, whether you want to, to come and get in touch with me rather than shout across the chamber like this. Um, and the other questions you asked about the loan. He's shouting from here as well. Yeah. And now, this is a meeting. In public, not a public meeting. Carry on, Councillor Patrick. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the other questions, I think, uh, were probably more fitting for the cabinet member for the finance, so if she's happy to answer those questions about the loans, I'll pass to Jeanette Williamson. Thank you. Right, Councillor Williamson. Let's do that now. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought this up, Councillor Hodson, because hopefully we um, don't seem to listen to what we've been saying so far. So with regards to loans that will Council make, it's good financial practice, it happened when you were in charge for a while. It happens all over the country with local authorities. We, it's money that's sitting in the camp. It's there to pay our suppliers, as and when they need pay. You can't pick up that money and put it into other things. Mr Mayor? Carry on, Councillor. Thank you. Therefore, what we do is maximise our cash flow whilst we can. We bring £300,000 in from our investments a year. Now, we know that councillors and mm -hmm. clients have been treating the way how they ban these loans. So, if you can suggest how else we've been three hundred thousand pounds in a year and all the years. So, feel, excuse me, I'm, spe I'm speaking. Thank you. Yeah, you do that. You can always email me as well if you haven't done up to now. So, any bright ideas, Patrick, email me as cabinet member. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, as I was named by the cabinet member for the environment, can I have a reply, right to reply, please? Very well, Councillor. Mr. Mayor. At the consultation event, I made it very clear at the consultation event that punishing the many because you can't deal with the few was wrong. I made that very clear. You accepted that. Mike Coby and the officer was there accepted that. I made it exceptionally clear that I was opposed to banning dogs on beaches and open spaces. So if you'd like to correct that, Councillor Patrick, I'd very much appreciate it. Or well, an apology. Councillor Patrick. Yes. You'll receive neither, neither Chris, because you actually didn't say that. Um, I'm happy that you may have said some aspects of this, but I don't remember any comments you made about the beaches. But if I'm happy to take this as part of your formal conservation response, and that will be included in all the considerations we have to make. Members, we're eating up valuable time. Councillor Paul Hayes. Thank you, Mr Mayor. My question is to the Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport, Councillor Stuart Whittingham. I refer Councillor Whittingham to page 64 of his delivery plan where he states he will improve transport links between major employment and residential areas. Can he then advise whether any financial penalties have been applied for the failure to replace on schedule the bridge between Wallasey and Birkenhead? Or, and this is a long shot Mr Mayor, but considering we're in a new age of political resignations, will he be taking political responsibility for this inordinate delay and abject failure and resign. 
Um, first question to uh, Council Matthew Patrick, uh, whose delivery plan states that he intends to work with colleagues in the Liverpool City region to modernise waste collection. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, I've lost track of what modernise uh, means in this in this context, and I'm not clear what it's to do with the uh, uh, Liverpool City region, how we collect our waste. So I wanted to just take the opportunity, maybe, to. Uh, uh, to re re reaffirm the commitment that his predecessor in the role uh, of the environment cabinet member gave um, so far as a change of collection that would involve either a three weekly collection or smaller green bins because it strikes me uh, perhaps he could explain what he means by modernise and specifically rule out changes to the green bin uh, collection on please. Councillor Patrick. Thank you, a popular man tonight. Um, it may disappoint you if he's already got the leaflet written, but there are, there's no deviation from the previous plan around the waste collection. Um, and I'll work with colleagues across the city region and find out the very best ideas, so I'll get best practice from every, every um, authority member of the city region and every authority right across the country about how we can um, improve various things around our recycling, around our collections, etc. So uh, if you have any ideas, I'd be happy to hear them. Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm grateful to Councillor Bassett for his clarity um, on that. Um, second question, uh, Mr. Mayor, to the Leader of the Council. In his report, he refers to the Will Together uh, initiative, which is an initiative, he says, of the Will Partnership, which I assume that the Council will be leading on. Can I ask him whether this is informed by any of the work that, again, Matthew Patrick started uh, last year? Um, he had indicated to me recently that uh, he was looking at the autumn as the likely timescale for the review of the operation of the constituency committees and engagements in general. Is he able to give any detail tonight of the interrelationship between our current engagement systems and this will together uh, proposal? Um, and I would just say to you that personally I can't shake the feeling that the constituency committees are not working as might have been envisaged by the administration. Councillor Phil Davis. Yeah, I think um, I think uh, I'd have to say, Stuart, you need to to wait to the the autumn. Um, as I said to you in my written reply to your your email a few weeks ago, uh, and we will be coming forward with um, with proposals. All, all I would say is what what's and I want to thank uh, my colleague Matthew Patrick for the excellent work he did last year on this. But I, I would just make the observation, which will inform our proposals we'll bring forward in the autumn, that one size doesn't fit all. Um, that the experiences that I think Matthew um, uh, sort of distilled from the, um, from the work he did when he went round to each constituency committee, it's not the same everywhere. Uh, and some constituency committees seem to be working well, others not so well. So I think it's, it's not going to be a uniform uh, model that, that we apply universally across the borough. I think we need to take into account the individual uh, views and, and the uh, the the um, experience that we've we've had across all four parliamentary constituencies, but um, I'm, I'm just giving giving a kind of trailer, if you like, for some of the some of the key issues that we are grappling with at the moment. But but more, more will be will be revealed in, in the autumn when we come up with more detailed proposals. The World Together uh, initiative is is more about. Um, working in partnership with our, our residents, but not just our residents, but the, the other key uh, agencies in the public, private and voluntary sector. It's very much based on, on the Wigan Council model, which you may have, may have seen. Um, the, uh, we, we've been to Wigan uh, to, to see how that's working. And, and one of the key messages from that is that, um, it, you know, if we go back to my comment, earlier comment about the uh, cuts in, in local government funding, um, we are going to, say to have to say to people, and I'm being really honest with, with you, we're not going to be able to do everything in the same way as we have in the past. You can't lose 40% of your budget and think that nothing will change. And we are going to have to ask residents to step up to the plate and do more themselves. But the deal is, you know, for example, if we uh, provide, and go back to Councillor Rennie's question, if we provide 
um, litter bins in particular locations, we expect residents to use those litter bins. If we provide uh, with organisations like Rural Medical College apprenticeships and training places, there is an expectation that, that people who need that training to get back into work will take advantage of that. So that Rural Together is a contract between ourselves and the local residents of what we can, what we will uh, promise to deliver as a local authority, but equally what the responsibility that they've got on their side to respond in a constructive way to the challenges that we've all now got in terms of how we improve people's quality of life. It's very much based on the Wigan model. It's uh, something that Rural Partnership uh, have, have really uh, kind of embraced and, and we have, we'll be launching it very soon. And I think, um, I think the experience from Wigan is if you're honest and open with local mm -hmm. residents about the funding challenges and constraints, people will respond positively. And there's plenty of examples from Wirral how residents have, you know, through residents associations. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I think the leader of the council is filibustering. Could you ask him to come to a close? Oh, Carry on, Councillor Bates. I'm actually grateful for the long detail that's been given this very time. Well, it was a well, you know, I let's just, not waste any more time, please, Councillor Davis. So, sorry, before I was really interrupted, thank you for your protection, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, so, so it's very much based on, on the Wigan model, and again, uh, we'll be bringing more detail on that to um, Cabinet and Council in the future weeks. But I, I think it is definitely a, a good investment uh, of our time, and, and um, I think our residents, our residents will respond positively because it was a huge amount of talent and, and goodwill and, and expertise out there in, in our communities that we need to take advantage of. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Councillor David Ellis. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this question might really be considered to be uh, a supplementary to the one asked by uh, Councillor Kirubia, but my point really is approaching it from a slightly different direction. Question to the Cabinet Member for Jobs and Growth, Angela Davis. Page 71 of the delivery plan states that she will drive significant progress on major development projects such as the Hoylet Golf Resort. How can the Cabinet member make such commitments before any viability assessments have been published? I suppose I should declare a slight interest here having been involved in exactly this type of development during my years of employment on joint development projects. So, I'd be interested to hear what her response is to that. What, um, before any viability assessments have been made, how can you make such a commitment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Councillor Angela Davis. Um, the, the commitment, Councillor Alderton, is to make sure that we do have those feasibility studies, and then obviously, depending on those, it would then become a planning matter. But it would be wrong for us not to, not to pursue it. You're saying before then. Councillor David Burgess Joyce. I'll speak very quickly. Time now. Um, first question is to the Cabinet Member for Children's Services, uh, Mr. Mayor. Page 56 of the delivery plan states she will make Widdell an employer of choice for social workers. Uh, in November last year, and following the resignation of her predecessor and the resignation of the director, the cabinet member told us that heads will roll. Following the verdict given to the uh, paedophiles of the Regenterum brothers, can she advise how many heads have rolled? Who was this to? I don't know how to answer this because I think it's a scandalous question to be honest. But what I will say to you is that we do want Willow to be the, the employer of choice for social workers. We want to um, have the best social workers that are possibly out there to come to Willow. We do that by providing an environment where they feel safe to work, where they're supported properly with a proper man management structure. We're providing that already. It's already in the process of, of going forward. Um, we are seeing people coming over, we have um, agency staff who are transferring over now to permanency, so that's going very, very, very well. We have now got a team in, in place that I think is one of the best and strongest teams in the country to make sure that our children get the best possible service in the world, in, in the country. So 
and going forward with it, what's happened in the past will stay in the past, but we will always make sure that children's services work for the safety of our children and for the goodness of our children in every ward of the world. Councillor Burgess Joyce. Um, to, just to clarify, obviously, with my scandalous question, I, I actually am a great supporter of what you're trying to do. Uh, and in fact, I actually assisted in finding um, that team uh, that's doing a great job. The question was, you specifically talked about heads will roll. I'd just like to know which heads have rolled, uh, or are there any on the plan? I think that's already out there. That's for public use. Everybody knows who's gone and who's stayed. So that's, you, you don't even have to ask that question. That, that information is already available. Right. Okay, I appreciate you getting quite aerated. I asked a civil question asking uh, who it was that you felt. Councillor Burgess Joyce, I think that's enough. Councillor Alan Brain, you've had two questions, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is for Councillor Sue Whittingham. Um, I'm referring to your report where you say we need to ensure that transport protects the vulnerable members of our community and further on. We have a good transport network in Rural, but we need to work hard to continue to improve and develop this so it continues to meet residents' needs. Um, I'm thinking of Oxton Village, uh, an area with steep hills, which uh, is the area where a number of vulnerable and uh, elderly residents live, who have relied for 40 years on a village bus which was withdrawn in April this year. Can you tell the council what steps you could take to restore the bus service to these vulnerable residents of Oxton. Councillor Whittington. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Brown, for the uh, first day's congratulations on your first question, and uh, thank you for the advance census. Uh, so the Avon's service message was withdrawn from the 20th of April 2018 as part of their own review services, rather than being due to the full area network review. As part of the changes made in April, services 90 and 92 were withdrawn and service 91 was revised to incorporate sections of these, these routes but did not include Oxton Village. Residents in the area are all within Mr Travel's policy guideline of being 400 metres within, being within 400 metres of bus service. But it is acknowledged that the gradients are steep and following the representations from local councillors we asked anyone if it was possible to divert the new 91 into Oxton Village. They looked into the possibility in detail, but determined that it was not possible due to the additional time required in the timetable to include Oxford Village would have required either an additional vehicle at a, a cost of £100,000 per year, or the omissions of a section of route which would have left, would have left, been left out outside the 400 metre buffer. Currently, there are no proposed replacement bus services to Oxford Village, however, both Mercer Travel and Avon are aware of the issue and will give them due consideration, which will save themselves results in the future. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Jeff Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is to Phil Brighton. Phil, on page 63 of the delivery plan, it states that you will find the most appropriate, sustainable model to deliver parks, leisure, library, and cultural services. So, could you confirm whether you intend to commission? any more consultants to undertake this work following the reports by Shared Intelligence and BWB and do you agree with me that the money spent on both reports has been wasted? That's a bright more. Thank you uh, Mr. Mayor. It's not my intention to commission any further reports nor reports taken up to this point. I've formed part of an important heaven space to inform the leisure review which will soon conclude. Thank you. Councillor Bruce Perry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is um, for the Cabinet Member for Children's Services, Councillor Bernie Mooney. Um, <coughs> Councillor Mooney, on page 54 of the delivery plan, states the Cabinet would also like to see more support for care leavers with housing and job opportunities. Can the Cabinet Member therefore advise what has been done to make care leavers aware of the new £1,000 bursary being made available for mortgages by the Government to any who choose to take up an apprenticeship? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. I haven't got a definitive answer for that, but what I will do is I will check and it, uh, we thank you for bringing this to my attention. I'm sure that they know about it because the looked after children's staff are excellent at finding any sort of opportunity there are 
for our care leaders and we're looking at apprenticeships and I think we've um, been absolutely able to um, pin down, I think it's 10 at the moment, but they're going to take on our care leaders and so that other um, companies are coming forward offering care leaders apprenticeships. It's an absolutely fantastic story. Um, and I, I'd be more than happy to share it with you when I get all the statistics. But Biffa have come forward to offer 10, and they may be offering 10 a year. If we can get 10 apprenticeships a year for our care leaders, it's going to be an excellent story, and we'll be able to um, look after them. But I'll make sure that this £1,000 is brought to the attention of the, of the people who are in the, the uh, care leaders department, and I'll let you know if we know about it and, and if we're already advising our care leaders to that effect. Thanks for the question. Councillor Cherry Povel. Um, my question refers to page 56, that's to Councillor Bernie Mooney, um, about on the delivery plan. And um, it says, review school provision to make sure that it meets the needs of all world children. Um, can you tell us, uh, Councillor Mooney, will the Cabinet member therefore ensure that this review includes the opportunity for school leavers from Wirral to attend the new University of Liverpool Mathematics College? announced by the government last week to meet the needs of maths and physics students in the city region. I'm afraid I'm going to have to re-echo what I've just said to, to Bruce. Um, I will get a definitive answer for you um, and let you know, but I'm sure, as I say, the people who look after our care leaders are, are very, very, very well equipped to make sure that they know every opportunity that there is out there and to support them in whatever it is that they want to do. But I will make sure that you get an answer to, to let you know if they want to go on to that university and do that particular um, course that they can. So I'll get back to you with that. Thank you. Councillor Andrew Gardner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Question for the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources, Janelle Williamson. Page 60 of the delivery plan states you will deliver a new focus on income generation. Can the cabinet member advise how much advertising revenue has been received from for external organisations, i.e. not the council, advertising in the failing Wirral View newspaper? I mean, That's thank it. you for that question. Uh, I'll have to provide a written response to that, but I might just say that I'm pleased that you recognise me. The need for us to generate income to direct resources of your government taking so much money off us. Councillor Steve Williams. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question to uh, Cabinet Member for the Environment. Matthew, we've heard you a new report referring to improving recycling rates. Does this include the policy outlined by one of your predecessors for food waste recycling bins in every home, or is that plan now not going ahead? Councillor Patrick. Um, Steve, just, I, I think just to answer Stuart on that one, the, the plan is the same as on the Trouble Animal, there, is no, there are no plans to go forward with the food waste uh, recycling. Councillor Wendy Clements. Thank you Mr Mayor. Uh, I have a question for the Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Health. Um, on page 59 of the delivery plan it says that you're going to deliver integrated services and functions with the NHS. So I just wonder if you've been given any indicative figures for the share that Wirral NHS will get from the additional 20 billion announced by the government for the NHS. I don't know the exact amount of energy, but I'll let you know. Councillor Cathy Hodgson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is to the Cabinet Member for Finance and Resources, Jeanette Williamson. On page 60 of the delivery plan states that that she will make sure our digital channels and website are the best they can be. On the 4th of July, the government announced a new 7.5 million fund for local authorities to apply to for improving digital services. Will Wirral be applying for a share of that money? Councillor Wilson. Uh, thanks for that, Cathy, and I'll get back to you on that. I've got information to hand. Councillor Jerry Ellis. <laughs> Shh, come on, members. Councillor uh, Andrew Davis, and Andrew, on page 61 of the delivery plan, and by the way, this is one that usually goes to the leader. He doesn't give me very good answers, so I'm going to try you this time. Come on, Councillor Ellis, we're running out of time. We are, quote, quote from you, Andrew, we are now in a position to duly be in a driving seat 
and create the quill that we want for our residents. And then you're talking about the new the deal, developments. Now, I would consider that one of the ones you mentioned there is the, with the golf results, so called golf results. You say you're in the driving seat. Are you aware of the hazards in front of you, in my question? Because are you aware of the dubious record of the. Your well, Angela, my thoughts are trying, Angela, for a change to see if we get the same plan as well. Is, is, hey. is that your question? No, no, he's changing his name to Philip Bustering now, apparently. He's like to instead of Phil Davis. So, Andrew, are you aware of the dangers that you're letting yourself off? Are you aware of the money, the, the taxpayers' money, which Phil is always saying is we haven't got much of, taxpayers' money that's being spent on these consultants? coming up with a report eventually, which is going to tell us what we know already. And that is going to be, they're going to tell us that it's not really a practical project. So, are you aware of all these problems? And are you going to have a word with Phil Davis about them? Councillor Andrew Davis. Okay, um, in terms of the um, reports, the, they are currently being funded by, by the company, not by us and the council. So, we need to wait and see what the outcome is of those, and then it will be a planning decision. So I'm afraid that is time, members. Oh, I beg your pardon, I cut you short, we didn't time. Sorry, who else we wanted to go answer question? Okay, Councillor Julie McManus. I don't want the jack in the box, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my question is to Councillor Stewart. Having personal experience of using the Safer World Hub and seeing the benefits this collaborative partnership has brought, especially when working with residents in Banning Close um, to do with antisocial behaviour. I'd, I'd like to know if the Cabinet member can tell us a little bit more about the development of Phase 2 of the Safer Wirral Hub and how this will respond to the needs of residents in particular in regards to antisocial behaviour. Oh, sorry. Paul Stewart. Thank you, um, Julie. Thank you for the advance notice. Um, the Safer Wirral Hub has undoubtedly had a positive effect on uh, both the reduction in numbers of the social behaviour report being received, but also in regards to the case management of those antisocial behaviour incidents that are reported. The Safer Wirral Hub has overseen and coordinated a range of initiatives to combat and tackle uh, ASB where it occurs. Whilst I would like to congratulate the officers from all agencies involved in delivering these activities to tackle ASB, I'm keen to do even more. I'm aware that ASB still blights some areas and the issues of scrambler bikes have not totally gone away. I'll be working with officers to seek even greater <laughs> integration as part of phase two of the Safer Little Hub development. I have asked officers to consider aligning those services who have a responsibility to enforce and regulate across the border into the Safer Little Hub. I'm particularly keen to establish whether we can do more proactively to prevent our citizens from becoming offenders in the first place, and I have been encouraged by the work taking place with the early help resources and the PCSOs who are located at the Safer Whittle Hall. Phase 2 of the Safer, uh, the Safer Whittle Hall will continue to build on the current model, offering a single unit where professionals and residents can contact to resolve the antisocial behaviour that they are experiencing. Councillor Adam Sykes? No, sorry. No, sorry. Councillor Ian Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Question to the Cabinet Member for Law and Order. Uh, on page 56, uh, sorry, on page 58 of the delivery plan, uh, can I thank uh, Cabinet for finally publishing the uh, portfolio <coughs> responsibilities? It's been very helpful. On page 58 of the delivery plan, it states the Cabinet will work to, and I quote, tackle rough sleeping and homelessness. This correlates to the aim uh, and the item listed in the new Cabinet portfolios which includes homelessness and rough sleeping within the brief for law and order. Does the Cabinet member believe that including this responsibility within his portfolio risks criminalising people who have done nothing wrong but be homeless? And wouldn't that responsibility not fit better within the housing and planning brief? Councillor Paul Stewart. Um, thank you for the question. We work together. It's not about criminalising uh, homeless, homeless people at all. Um, I'm quite happy with it sitting in my brief, um, and as cabinet members, um, we will work together across cabinet portfolios 
and my <coughs> actually touches most of us cabinet portfolios as well. Thank you. Councillor Paul Doughty. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, whereas we all welcome the warm weather that we're enjoying at the moment, is it, is it not a reminder of the, uh, the challenges that we face going into the future with climate change? And so my question is for our uh, Cabinet Member for the Environment. Already we see, and there's questions tonight about uh, food waste collection recycling targets. Is it not inevitable that this Council will need to face uh, the need to do food waste collection? Is it not inevitable? And already we see in the, in the chamber tonight that people are starting to make a political potato out of it. I mean, what hot potato? What I'd like to see is that the council come together to address this matter in a sensible way where we will need to collect food waste to hit our recycling targets. And to our shame as English councils, all the Welsh councils collect food waste and uh, their government subsidises it because they, they recognise the importance of it. So can I call upon our Cabinet Member for the Environment to call upon all parties, uh, Conservative, Liberals and Green alike, to support in the future, when we need to, to uh, come together to uh, hit our recycling targets by facing the issue that we need to collect food waste. Yeah. Councillor Patrick, this is the last reply. Thank you, Councillor. I think, I think that in Wales there's a government subsidy issue for the council, so it's quite an expensive endeavour to go and collect this. I'm really keen for us to be forward thinking as everything we do as a council, and I'm really keen for us to increase our recycling rates. I've made a statement tonight, and I stand by the statement that Phil Bright has made previously, that there are no plans to introduce food waste in the borough, but I guess we can keep recycling that hot potato, so if that counts somewhere towards our target, then we'll keep doing that. That's, that's the end of those questions. Now on to item 6A, the World Plan 2020 Annual Report. Um, notice has been given that one amendment in respect of the World Plan Annual Report 2016-17 item. It is set out on page one of the agenda supplement. Meanwhile, Councillor Phil Davis and Councillor George Davis to move and second the motion to note the annual report on the World Plan. Thank you. And councillors Phil Gilchrist and Dave Mitchell to move and second their amendments. Second it, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Phil Davis, you now have up to five minutes to speak to the motion. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I am proud to move the um, annual report for, before council. I'm proud of the record that this administration has delivered on our 2020 pledges. Let me focus on, on some headlines. Nine in ten rural schools are now rated as good or better by Austel. 20,000 people have been supported with adult social care, either by the council or through our new integrated health and care trust. Almost 1,400 people have stopped smoking with our help. 2,400 homes have been improved. 1,305 new businesses opened their doors. £147 million pounds of private sector investment have been attracted to Wirral. 3,000 new jobs have been created. Our new state-of-the-art youth zone is up and running, attracting thousands of new members. And we are investing more than £7 million pounds on improving our highways and replacing every single street light, all 27,000 of them, with energy-efficient LED bulbs. Mr Mayor, this is a record that I'm proud of. Uh, I will not be uh, asking council to support the Lib Dem amendment. I absolutely refute the fact that we have uh, belatedly, rec belatedly recognised the basics. I've just read out some headlines of, of the uh, work we've been doing on the 20 pledges, which uh, has included those basic services from 2015 when we moved it. And finally, uh, Mr Mayor, I, I really do think that the Lib Dems have got a cheek in their final paragraph of their amendment. Council, and I'll quote, Council fully understands the uncertain financial climate under which the council is operating. I quoted the figures of the LG.